Tanstack form is a new form library from the amazing Tanstack suite. It's headless, performant, and type safe. It's still on V0, but we'll get on the first beta quite soon, so why not giving it a try already? I'm using it on a side project, and I have to say I'm quite satisfied on how it is turning out, but today let's begin with a simple form and build it together. Side note, in this video I'm gonna use components from Shatzien, but the library is headless, which means you can use whatever UI components you want. Today's goal is to build this simple form in order to learn the Tanstang form APIs. We will also add validation, reset and submit of the form. If we inspect the code a little bit, we have an app.ts6 with just the title and a signup component that is in fact our form. Right now it is uncontrolled, it's just a couple of inputs, but let's see how Tanstang form can enhance this form. The first step is unsurprisingly installing Tanstack form. Here you see I'm installing React form. And the reason is that in fact this library works with React, Vue, Angular, Solid, and Lit. Here I'm using the React version, but the library supports many other frameworks. Now, the first step is in fact called the use form hook. And this is basically our entry point, so we can declare our form and we're gonna use it in our application. The hook obviously takes some parameters, and the first one we want to input is the default values. So in our case, we want a username and a password. With that, you can already see that the form is an instance of form API with username and password as strings. So it is already type safe. Next up, every time you handle with forms, a common practice is to make sure to override the on submit so that it doesn't have the default behaviors. And now how can you handle the submit, you may ask. Well, here you can add a parameter called on submit, and here, in fact, you can console out the values to begin with. Or even better, if you call this value, you already have an object with username and password. So this, like I said, everything is type safe, and value has password and username. Let's keep it simple for now. If I switch to my form and I open the terminal, I can type something, click sign up, but nothing happens yet because we say the form didn't have to do anything, but we haven't connected yet our inputs and values with our form. So let's do it now. Our form hook also exposes the field API, which you can call with form.field. And this is a component which matches exactly one of the fields of our form. There's a name property, which obviously has only two valid values, username and password. You can pass username, and you can now put your component inside the children field. So let me wrap this one here and close the component. Now there's still an error and the reason is that you're not supposed to just pass some JSX code, but also through render props here, you have to pass a field and this is what you're gonna use to have control over the components. This means the value of our input will be field.state.value and the onChange will take the event and field.handleChange where we can pass our e.target that value. So this is the first one. We did the username and we can do pretty much the same with the password. So let's copy paste it here. We can super quick replace our username with password. We have the capital P here, password type here. And with that, it should already work. So let's give it a try. I can type something here, I can type something there, and if I click on sign up, nothing happens. The reason here is that our button is not inside the form. So if we want to submit from a button outside the form, we can obviously do that with form.handlesubmit. And if we go back and we click sign up now, you find in the console that indeed we have our username and our super secret password. But how can you handle the reset? Unsurprisingly, you can do the same here, again by passing on the onclick function, form.reset. And with only that, there you have it, you can now reset your form. But as we already mentioned, I don't want to be able to sign up if the form is not valid. So let's add some kind of validation. If you want to validate a single field, it's super easy. Form.field also takes a validators object, which has some properties that are basically all the possible events when you want your validation to take place. Let's begin with onChange, the easier one. Here you have a function which takes the value, and if the function returns something that is a string, the error will be displayed. Otherwise, if it returns undefined, well, it means that the form is okay. Let's give it a try. If I sign up, you see that nothing is printed in the console. But if I type something in the username, the submit works fine. I delete, 
Submit doesn't work anymore. But I also want to display an error here, right? And actually I want to display this error. So how does it work? The field prop that is being passed here on the render prop holds everything you need to know about your field. So field state.meta.errors. And this is an array of errors that are being returned on this field. So if we have some errors, we can show something. For example, our errors. And if I close the div, I might want to add let's say some margin top here and if we go back you already see that there's an error here if i tap something the error disappears i can now submit if i delete the error is back and this is happening basically real time every time something changes but sometimes validation can be a heavy operation so let's say i want to debounce it well it's as easy as changing a value here and say that i want the debounce on my own change and let's say half a second. I also have to change this to async because now the onChange function is run only after a debounce of half a second. And if I go back on the code, you see that I delete it now and after half a second, the validation is performed and it is working just fine. So you can simplify this function even more, but this works fine only if your validation is really simple. Let's say you have something a little bit more complicated well, this might not be enough, but let's give it a try already with the password field. In this case, we still want to use, let's say, a validator with async, but we not only want to check the password length, but some more field. For example, the value must be six characters long and it must contain an uppercase, a lowercase and at least a number. Here you can obviously go as complicated as you want, but let's see if it works. So I can copy again this part of the code and paste it here on our password. This can obviously become a component by itself, which takes the error and shows them. But let's see if it works. So if I click sign up now, password must be at least six characters long. I type more than six characters and must contain an uppercase letter. Uppercase letter, number, and finally our form is fine. I can click sign up and well, this was my secret password. If I delete the number after half a second, I can no longer click on sign up. The cool thing here is that if you want to extract this logic, you can even use some libraries like Zod or Valibot, but we'll cover that on another video. In fact, I'm planning to make an entire video dedicated on async validation, using validation libraries and so on. So if you're interested, I recommend you subscribing to the channel. I was also thinking about a video on nested fields and dynamic values with arrays, where you can have a dynamic number of items in your form. And I'm testing this feature on a tiny side project here, so I think it might be interesting to share it in a dedicated video. In any case, the code of this project is already on GitHub in case you want to have a look. If you're interested in Tanstack Form, this new library, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit like on the video, because this is the first video of a series where I'm gonna cover some of the most useful features. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye!